Then uh, the next thing right that I wanted to talk about was actually, so this is all about the regularization and uh, the other thing right is actually pre-processing okay, this the, this is the last thing right within this is something called pre-processing. So, pre-processing you know right, so the pre-processing could include both the weights as well as the as well as the you know the, the, the input value. Okay, so, this you could, could pre process the input or you could pre process the weights or generally you pre process both. So, what this actually means is that right, I mean suppose I have I have my I have my examples right, do you see do I simply push them in just the way they are and similarly weights right, how do I actually you know initialize them or should I take care of what is happening to the weights and the input. The reason being that because you have got like millions of guys getting involved and even if your weights are typically small, but then because so many right the summation is happening, so many terms are getting involved right, you do not want things to blow up okay inside. I mean so for example, I mean you can think about a sigmoid right, if you think about a sigmoid you know that if you if you go too high or if you go too low then then you have a gradient value which will which will which will fall off very fast which means that your weight updates right will all get sort of say affected. So, this so the pre processing is done to sort of you know maintain some kind of a balance right I mean throughout the network so that things do not explode or you know things don't vanish right either way okay neither should happen so as far as the input is concerned right most of the time what is done is you kind of you kind of convert your data to zero mean unit variance zero mean unit variance right this is this is standard which i think you know you would have seen seen you know elsewhere also so suppose you have a random variable x right and then you know if it has mean mu and you know variance sigma then you simply do x minus mu by sigma right this this in a sense will make sure that an expectation of y is 0 and then expectation of the, the variance of y right which is let us say you know sigma uh, sigma of y if I call that as the, as the variance or where of y right where of y is simply equal to 1 right because expectation x minus mu square that is sigma square sigma square by sigma square right. So, this is the simplest thing right which you can do, but what typically happens is at the input right you, you might be able to do this and you typically do this okay so as to sort of keep them you know within check but what can happen is as you traverse from see layer to layer right there can be what is called a covariate shift what this means is that the that the that this is statistics which in this case we are only interested in up to the second order statistics but that statistics can actually change right because of because of the fact that you've got your weights and all involved and what can happen is as you go from layer to layer to layer the say statistics that's appearing at the input of every layer can keep changing when ideally right you would want to say that at the input i'm actually controlling things but then you know what control do i have after it has passed through a layer I do i still have a control about what's happening right at the input to the next layer then that layer does something something to this and then there's an activation then at the output something comes in which becomes the input to the next layer right so what can happen is you can have what is called you know a covariate shift this is called an internal covariate shift uh, it's like saying that you know a distribution suppose you try you suppose you have a network which you have trained on a distribution of examples if that distribution changes tomorrow then this network won't work well because it is only it is only seen a distribution samples coming from a distribution right if you just go far away from that kind of distribution draw samples from elsewhere and ask this network to see perform it will struggle let us say an example could be like you know good light and dark light you have trained it all on you know great good lit uh, well lit images and then you suddenly start showing dark images it would not understand. So, that is a distribution that is like a domain change right that is what we call that that is that we call this you know, you know domain change problem here this is something similar but then it is happening internally. So, that is why that is called an internal covariant uh, covariate shift internal covariate shift internal covariate shift. And, and in order to ad address this issue right what is done is there is something called batch batch normalization ok. There are some people right, who actually who actually it is not that it is it is always a must ok, but then many times it is used and uh, and this comes prior to the activation that means before you apply the activation in that layer before you apply that this batch normalization comes. And the way this batch normalization right works is actually very simple I mean exactly the way that that you had and it is called batch because it is actually a mini batch ok it is for it is for a mini batch I mean this you can in fact right you can even do it only only if you had a great right, mini batch situation. So, that is where this batch comes ok so this batch is really a mini batch and what this means is that if you had m samples in actually a mini batch so so right i mean no, no right imagine that imagine that i give you i give you sample 1 i give you sample 2 i give you sample 3 and i have m number of samples right and let's say it has a, it has a dimension i don't know what dimension i've taken here uh, okay let's say right if it has if it has i don't know a dimension d then what you're sort of saying is that 
see when you when you want to when you want to do this uh, zero mean unit variance right you have to go like this oh, right you have to go like that right you have to go along along each element you have to find out because it's that same element appearing again in another uh, another example again appearing in another you don't see so the only thing that you don't consider is kind of you uh, you consider it everything to be sort of you know decorrelated so you don't take the correlations to account. For example, you don't worry about okay what correlation this pixel, this entry might have with another, and so on. So you don't you don't take that into account. So you just assume everything to be decorrelated, which is an approximation that they are making. But what is done is at the kth entry, right? If you're looking at this to be the kth element, then what you do is you you find out mu b at k, which is the mean, okay, the batch norm to be one by m. That means you are summing across the row right so i wanted to wanted to read you know if you want to think about it visualize it like that 1 by m summation xi k i going from 1 to m right this will be the mean and the variance will be sigma square b and let me say k it's not power k okay this is the kth entry will be 1 by m summation now xi k minus mu b k which is of course a constant doesn't depend on i mu b k i equal to 1 to m And uh, oh, sorry, square, right? And then you have, and then and then you do uh, you do a, a normalization, which is what we did here, right? Same way, you do x i k minus mu b k by sigma b k, right? Exactly as we as we do there, except that now we are we are doing it uh, doing it for say, every element. The the idea being that if you keep on doing it at at every input layer, then you're sort of making sure that right things are sort of you know within 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 bounds. And uh, right, this will ensure that your that your that your mean is uh, mean is uh, uh, this k again. Okay, x i hat k. So this x i hat k is zero. It will ensure that variance of x i hat x i hat k is one. And also, what is done is you know as a sort of a learnable parameter. Right, people don't just leave it at this because the problem is if the, if the if the network actually did not want this, let's say right, you are forcing it now. Right, you are saying that this is what I want you to I want I will force. But to just give an allowance on top of this, what is typically done is right. We actually let the network learn two parameters per element. You know, per so if you have if you have you know d dimension, that means two d additional parameters which come in the form like you will have like gamma k x i hat k plus beta k. Now this gamma k and beta k are are again are again learnable. Okay, what this means is that see for example right. So what you are saying is if if for example right that this guy this network was actually okay with x i hat k itself then it will learn a gamma k to be 1 and then the beta k to be to be 0 it will automatically find it out to be that because then it will figure out that x i hat k is probably the most ideal thing but suppose it figures that x i k the original x i k was actually good and then we tampered with it then what gamma k and this beta k will actually give you back will you back x k huh, the variance of what should be gamma k gamma k should be sigma b k and uh, yeah i have sigma b k right and then beta k should be mu b right so so which means that you are you are letting the network figure it out because you are forcing something believing that there could be an internal covariant shift and therefore i want to right, bring you know things into bound but these extra parameters are added as learnable okay these are again learned and there is a, there is a there is a backdrop for batch norm which we won't do here. Okay, in this course we don't do that. But there's actually a formal way to do back, you know, back propagation when you have batch norm, because these are become right. These are also now these have to be learned now, gamma and beta. But the idea behind using gamma and beta is that if the network believes that xi hat is the best, it'll take that. If it believes that xi is the best, it'll take that. If it believes something else is best, it'll then find gamma and, and see beta k accordingly. Okay, so right, that's the that's the that's it. That's the thing about batch norm. This is one thing remaining. That's about initialization of weights. That won't. Uh, that's a very small thing. So I'll talk about it in our next class. Okay, so that then we can switch over to CNNs. Okay, in the next class we'll be doing CNNs. Mm -hmm.